we looked at uh, at chapter nine. We were, we we're looking at the heart of the heart of the apostle Paul. Paul in verse twenty-two, he says, "I am made all things to all men." And I said, "Wow, that's isn't that a great purpose?" He says, "I am made all things to all men." And what is Paul's goal? Well, it says, "I might by all means save the more." The word gain is all through these verses. And uh, we look at that, and, and really that is the heart of the Apostle Paul. Not only a preacher, a teacher, an apostle, a missionary, an evangelist, a winner of souls. A winner of souls. Now, the Apostle Paul is willing to forego uh, personal liberties, uh, legitimate rights, and what else? Think of that for a minute. What else? Was the Apostle Paul willing to give up to achieve this purpose and goal? I have made all things to all men. I might by all means save the more. We're going to look at the method this, this evening on how Paul would achieve this goal. It is by running a race. Now you think for a minute here. A race to win, win the lost. A race to win the loss. And we read verses 24 through 27. Very um, interesting verses. But what does it mean, a race to win the loss? Now, you know, I, I've had quite, I have quite a few different commentaries on 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. And uh, I've read them all. Uh, and, and Esword has a bunch and all kinds of things. And... And I, I'm looking through, as I look at chapter 9, I'm looking for the connection of these verses. You know, you see, they're not fragmented. Uh, they're, you know, God, Holy Spirit is, is using the Apostle Paul, and, and they, they fit in line. They're, they're, there's a theme, there's a, you know, they, everything's connected. And, and so when you read verses 24 through 27 about a race, you would say, well, Paul must be talking about a Christian, you know, we're in a Christian race, right? We're in a race, right? All, every Christian is in a race. But see, uh, I, I couldn't find the connection until, actually, the last book I had on my shelf. And it kind of showed me the connection. Okay? And I'm going to show you that tonight. I think it's really amazing. It's really convicting, actually. Okay? What would you give up? What would you sacrifice? What would you deny... To win the loss for Christ. What would you do in counting the cost as the Apostle Paul, as he sets forth running the race? What would we have to do to run the race? Well, we think of this illustration here. Uh, we would have to have preparation, right? We would have to have sacrifice, endurance, and, and much, much more. Okay? So when we look at this race before us here, Paul is not talking about the Christian race. He's talking about the race to win souls. The race to win souls. Now, uh, there's one, uh, one commentary, I think it's uh, what, the Bi what the Bible uh, teaches on 1 Corinthians. I think it's uh, Wilson and Stabley. But they have an outline, and I, I thought it was really good. Like I said, I, I looked all over, and I read... I read all the commentaries and, and some of the things, and, and they talked about the race and the Olympic Games and the Isthmus Games and you know running in a race and discipline and, and self control and all these things about running the race. But I I, did, I couldn't get a connection to what Paul's teaching here on Christian liberty. You see, Paul's talking about Christian liberty and how do you run a race? And so here here's some thoughts here. First of all, let me give you an outline. You see, in chapter 8, we're talking about Christian liberty explained. Christian liberty explained. Verse 9, chapter 8, is the key verse. But take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. Then we have chapter 9, is an illustration of the Apostle Paul's exercise of Christian liberty. Okay, so we're going through that. Chapter 10, this is the general outline. Chapter 10, the first half, if you're familiar with the chapter, 
You see, we see Israel's failure in self-control. See, she, you know, these are examples that we should learn from in chapter 10. Uh, Israel, uh, off, you know, sacrificed to idols, worshipped idols, uh, the wrath of God was upon her. Uh, she had no self-control, Israel. She had no self-discipline. And dear ones, listen, she was to be the light of the world, right? She was to be the light to the Gentile world. But she failed. And that's the first half of chapter 10. The second half, we come back to the issue of uh, Christian liberty, idols off of, I mean, uh, food offered to idols and idol worship, things like that, and uh, the Christian practice. So that's chapter 8, 9, 10. They're a unit, okay, and that's how you have to take them. But see here, how does running a race for race for service uh, fit into Christian liberty? Or how, how, how does running a race for souls fit in Christian liberty? Uh, let me give you further detail on this outline for a minute, and you'll see. Okay, Chapter 8 is called the discipline of godly consideration. The discipline of godly consideration. And here we see in chapter 8 the renunciation of personal liberty. The renunciation of personal liberty. We read verse 9, okay, chapter 8, but take heed lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. So we're talking about godly consideration of the brother or sister in the Lord that, that's weak. And so in verse 13, notice what it says there. Wherefore, if meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth lest I make my brother to offend. So the first one, we see the discipline of godly consideration, the renunciation of personal liberty. Tonight, you have personal liberty. And uh, you can exercise that personal liberty in almost in any aspect of your Christian life. But beware, beware that in exercising your Christian liberty, you do not offend, them, offend a brother or cause a brother or sister to fall. <clears throat> Number two, we've looked at um, verses 15 through 18 in chapter 9. We looked at those last week. Um, and I said, look at verse 15 for a minute. It says, but I have used none of these things. See, Paul didn't use any of his, uh, in a sense, personal liberties. He put them aside. But there's something else he also renounced. He, he renounced his personal, uh, personal rights. And so verse, verses 15 through 18 speaks of the discipline of personal surrender. Remember, Paul said, I have rights. You have rights? Every, every missionary, every pastor, apostle, you know, I, I, I can lead, around, lead a wife around, you know, everybody else is doing this, you know. Uh, I can be, receive support uh, from, from other churches, from Corinth. Uh, you know, these are things, these are my rights as an apostle. But Paul says, I, I surrender them. I forgo being supported. So, for what reason? Well, Paul said, so I can preach the gospel free of charge. And so the second aspect of this, this outline is the discipline of personal uh, personal surrender. He renounced his personal rights. This evening, we have personal rights, right? We can think of our citizenship, we can think of what we have in Canada, but, but we're talking about uh, those in ministry, basically. I have personal rights, uh, in the sense of I, I should be you know, supported, this and that. I have a personal right to be uh, married, things of that sort. But also, I have the right to forgo that, right? And it's personal surrender. And Paul says, why? Because I want the gospel to be preached, no charge. I, I don't want people, you know, if, if uh, people thought tonight that, well, Pastor Tom Newton is just in it for the money. That would be hard to, you know, Hard to, to comprehend. I mean, hunter. To, I, I would. I would want to say no. I'm not in it for the money, and this is how I would show that I'm not in it. I'm not. I don't. I'll, I'll work. I'll support myself. 
So that's what Paul does. So let's go on now as we look at verses 24 through 27. This is the third. This is the discipline of self-control. The renunciation of lawful pleasures. I think that was the key, you see. I could, I could look in uh, chapter 8 and see, well, here is a, you know, a godly consideration. I'm going to for forgo personal liberties so I don't offend my brother. I said, I, I understand that. And then I could see here in this second one, the discipline of personal surrender. That I would, uh, I have personal rights, you know, I, but I can forego them if I want to for the furtherance of the gospel. But then Paul comes up with this race, you know, running the race. Paul, what are, you, what are you talking about? How does that fit into Christian liberty? Well, here's the key. Verses 24 through 27, the discipline of self-control, the renunciation of lawful pleasures. Lawful pleasures. Remember what I said? What would you give up? What would you sacrifice? What would you deny to win the loss for Christ? See, Paul's goal was I might by all means save the more. So we're going to find out that Paul was willing to give up personal liberty he was willing to give up personal rights, and he was willing to give up personal lawful pleasure. Okay? Now we'll talk about what, what you know, think, what, what are uh, legitimate lawful pleasures? We'll, we'll talk about that. In uh, 1 Corinthians 6.12, I think it goes back to that. We talked about a little bit of that. 1 Corinthians 6.12 says this, All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any man. All things, he said, but all things are not profitable. Okay? Now, you see, the first two of these um, uh, personal liberty and, and rights are towards others. He said, I'm going to forego personal, uh, personal liberties for others. That I might win more. I'm going to forego uh, personal rights for others, that I might win the more. But see, here we come, well, we look at this idea of lawful pleasures is towards himself. He says, what will I give up in a matter of self-control in order to win the loss? And Paul says, the best illustration I can come up with is a guy that runs a race, or a boxer, or an athlete. Okay. Now you think of some who uh, uh, we'll, we'll look at more of this idea. What are what are these? What would be some of these lawful pleasures? Well, maybe a missionary would say, "Well, I, I'm going to forego getting married. I'm going to be single for the rest of my life, and I'm going to go to the mission field and serve the Lord." How about you know? Uh, how about sleep and eating and. Uh, you know, how, how many of us like to go on the streets? Uh, do, do we like to go on the streets? Do you like to be called names and ridiculed and laughed at, belittled? You see, those, those are lawful pleasures. You know, I, I don't want people laughing at me, and I don't want people calling me names, and I don't want people... But see, there's some things that Paul had down and said, look, these are personal pleasures. I'm going to give up my sleep. I'm going to give up my food. I'm going to give up... I'm going to be nothing. To, to, to everybody, in order to win them to Christ. Lawful pleasures. Well, I, I got, I, you know, I can watch TV, I can watch the internet, I can watch the music, I can, you know, how do you spend your time? Lawful pleasures. We're going to, this is, this is hard. I tell you. This is, this is really, it's home to me. And I, and I maybe I just get to the tip of the iceberg of, of my own practice, Okay. You see, I don't like going to the streets sometimes. I, mean, I don't like to be ridiculed. I don't like to be laughed at. But you see, but I, I want to forego that because I want to see souls saved. I'm willing to sacrifice my reputation. I'm, I, I'm a nobody in this city. I'm an embarrassment to this city. But if I can win Christ, win souls to Christ by preaching and teaching the Word of God and being on the streets and, and bringing the Word of God, who cares what they think of me? 
Is that how you feel? This I don't want to go there. Paul did. The Apostle Paul did. Okay? The discipline of self-control. Let's look at that more as we look at these verses. The renunciation of lawful pleasures. You see, we think of, uh, you know, I bet we could just stop for a moment and we could, uh, how many missionary stories have you read? How many missionary stories have you read? Uh, even Brother John, Baptist history, stuff like that. You, you say, why did that person do that? Why did they, you know, leave everything? You know, you know, we, we, uh, we watched, um, let's see if it, um, the, um, what was his name? The runner, the Olympic runner? Little. Yeah, Eric Little. We watched it here. A tremendous. And that's what I'm trying to focus on. Let's say, you know, Eric Little, uh, uh, top of his class, uh, you know, well liked, uh, everything. And, and what does he do? No, let's back up. Well liked, top of his class. An Olympic winner, right? Gold medalist. Unbelievable. And the, convic and the movie is not even close to the book, okay? The real story. <laughs> what he did, actually. And so he, he said, he's not going to uh, run on the Sabbath, okay? The Christian Sabbath. And uh, so he, he took another race that was even, nobody thought he would ever win. He didn't, they just laughed. He won it. He won it. And, and then, you know, he's, he's the, what, Great Britain or Scotland? Hero? And what does he do? He leaves all that behind because he made a commitment to go to China to be a missionary. See, this is what Paul's saying about lawful pleasures. Renouncing of lawful pleasures in this matter of discipline of self-control. How much will you give up? How much lawful pleasures in order to win the loss to Christ? You see, the discipline of self-control, self-mastery, is best seen or illustrated what Paul has here. Okay? For example, in the athlete, verse uh, 24 speaks of a runner. Eric Little, uh, others that we've, you know, uh, the, the commentaries that I... Uh, Read, uh, spoke of Jim Thorpe and, uh, back in the, well, that would have been the 30s or 20s, 40s, but Jim Thorpe was an Indian runner, um, Native American, he just, he was fast. <laughs> uh, uh, a bunch of things like that. So they, they, they concentrated on the runners, and so here, Paul is concentrating on a, one, a runner in verse 24, verse 26, a boxer, and then, what? A preacher? Wait a minute. The discipline of self-control, self-mastery, is best seen or illustrated, yes, in an athlete, for sure, in a boxer, for sure, but in a preacher, in a preacher? How about a soul-winning preacher? Think about that for a minute. What does a soul-winning preacher have to give up in a matter of lawful pleasures? Well, he's called to do that. We're all called to be witnesses. Right? We're all called to, to spread the gospel. And, and we're all called to a life of self-control, self-mastery, self-denial. As the Lord says, take up thy cross and follow me. Deny self. Take up thy cross and follow me. That's salvation. But all, that's also service, right? Let me give you, uh, as we look at these verses, again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, what the Bible teaches. Again, I, I, I enjoy reading these, these commentators and all this, but this book really you know, nailed it. I, I believe this was, you know, how do we put all this together, Lord? What does this running a race for souls mean? How does that fit into Christian liberty? And, and this one particular book, had, had, I believe, had the answer. Okay? And the idea is, is uh, uh, the discipline of self-control, the renunciation of lawful pleasures. See, Paul gave up personal liberties, 
Paul gave up personal rights, and Paul was willing to give up personal lawful pleasures. To do what? To win the lost. To win souls. To be, uh, as he says, uh, all things to all men. And so there's four things that, that uh, this commentary had. Uh, verse 24 speaks of intense endurance or intense endeavor. Verse 24, intense endeavor. And we're, again, we're looking, the best illustration that we could see for a soul winning preacher would be compare to him or her, uh, and I think of a missionary lady, you know, going on to, uh, going on to, to uh, um, evangelize, things of that sort. I, I have a, I have a, Sometimes I, I'm okay with that, sometimes I'm not okay with that. But anyways, what I'm talking about is um, the athlete, or the uh, athlete, the, the runner. Verse 24, intense endeavor. Intense endeavor. We're going to see that in the athlete. Number, uh, verse 25, what we call an imperishable reward. Imperishable reward. Number 26, verse 26, we're going to see determined effort. And number 27, we're going to see dangerous possibility. Remember, the Apostle Paul is out to win the race. He's out to win souls. He's out to gain the more. You see, Apostle Paul would say, if I must give up personal liberty, so be it. He says, if I must give up personal rights, so be it. If I must give up personal lawful pleasures, so be it. Listen, dear ones. This, these are, I, I believe this little set of verses in this matter of Christian liberty, how Paul is approaching it, is what, is what makes missionaries great. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is what makes missionaries great. And all those great missionaries we read about, and all those great missionaries that are still coming down the pike, as it were, they are going out and, and serving, you see, uh, we're, 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 you know, we're, we're praying for certain ones. I think of uh, the one that uh, Brother John mentioned there in uh, St. John. Uh, not Obed, but the other one, John? He's going to Malta? Joshua. Joshua, these young people going out. See, they're facing these things. They're, they're fa you know, they're leaving behind all those niceties, all those pleasures, all those things that we enjoy. And they, and they, and, and they realize they're going to have to sacrifice them. Now, one, one book I like is Brusco. If you've never read Brusco, Bruce Olson, <laughs> you're in for a treat. Amazing, amazing missionary to uh, Peru, I think, or Brazil, Ecuador, somewhere in that area. Uh, he was a Lutheran uh, uh, Christian. He, he just, he left uh, his home. Uh, he, he tried to get into in touch with a mission uh, agency. Nobody wanted him. He was, he was brilliant in linguistics. He went to a people called the Montalones. And they said uh, the Montalones, you know, they were an ancient or primitive tribe in that area. And uh, you never uh, survived the Montalones. You never came out alive. And just, I'll go a little further with this. He got there and the missionary uh, didn't really believe that he was coming. And he said, I, I can't help you. I can't support you. I don't even have a place for you to stay. And so Bruce said, okay. He disappeared for six months. Six months later, he came back. And the missionary said, what, where have you been? I said, I've been with the Montalones. He said, no, no. Nobody has ever survived. Nobody's ever been with the Montalones and survived. They're headhunters. So I have. Well, they make missionaries great. Makes missionaries great. You see, he's out to win souls, Apostle Paul. He said, I'll give up anything. One man said this, we cannot serve others until we have mastered ourselves. Let me give that to you again. We cannot serve others until we master ourselves. Isn't that so true? I mean, it, when, as a young Christian, I remember when I finally realized coming to church was not just about me. What I could get out of it. How they could, you know, minister to me. 
Then I realized, well, I'm, I'm to minister to others. Then I realized that there was a whole, 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 like a whole new ball filled, a whole new thing opened up. Wow, man, this is great. Lose yourself to serve others. Young people, listen. Lose yourself, serve others. Then you will have the joy of the Lord. And you'll be usable. You'll be, you'll be one of those great missionaries. We cannot serve others until we master ourselves. So let's look at these verses real quickly. Get done here. Uh, verses 24 through 27. First one. 24. Let's read it. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all? But one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain. This is intense endeavor. The goal is so run that you may obtain. Now we, we, we talk about life being a race. Uh, young people, listen, you're in a race this morning, I mean this evening, I'm going to write, you're in a race. You're either going one direction or the other. You're either on the broad road that leads to destruction or you're on the narrow road that leads to life. Listen, there, there's only two roads, only two directions you're going. Heaven or hell. Heaven or hell. Yeah, life is like a race. And it's... Uh, it's interesting, uh, in, uh, in high school, I was a, a long-distance runner. I like long-distance, George. I could run for miles. <laughs> you know, it was, just, it was just like, oh, man. I liked uh, sprints, too. Uh, the 100-yard dash, oh, I love that. Um, you know, just those things that, that I excel. But lo running long distances, you know, running the mile was like, oh, that, that was great. That was great, okay? But you see, the Christian life is also like a race, isn't it? Paul says to us in 2 Timothy 4, 7, he says, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course. And that the idea is, I have finished my race. I finished my race. Now, as we look at this verse in 1 Corinthians 24, some things that we have to consider. Just because you're in a race doesn't mean you're going to, what? Win. You know? Just because you're in a race doesn't mean you're going to win. But isn't it nice to win? You say, well, maybe tonight you might say, as a Christian service, or a Christian, well, I really don't want to win. I don't mind just finishing the race. You say, well, yeah, that's, well, that, that'd be nice too, right? But see, Paul would never, never, you know, like you talk about, you know, I don't, you know, I can't, you know, when John Mark went back, you know, I, I think Paul said, you know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna fly with the eagles, you need to fly with the eagles, man. If you're gonna run with the best, you better run with the best. I, I think Paul, like he didn't have, you know, I, it would be very scary being on Paul's missionary team. I don't think I could make it. Honestly, I mean, he, he was intense. You see? He was intense. And so here, you see, intense endeavor. He says, Know you not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that you may obtain. You see, yes, it's, it's um, I, I don't want to win the race. Paul would say, that's a poor attitude. That's a poor attitude. To win doesn't mean I'm going to come in first. To win means I'm going to win souls for Christ. Isn't that great? Do you want to win souls for Christ? Intense endeavor. Hard work. We just had the uh, Winter Olympics, right? <clears throat> I didn't watch too much of it. But I like the races. The guy named Bolt, whatever his name is. Uh, he's fast. He's fast. I knew guys in high school. Okay? Uh, high school brothers. I mean, these, I knew some guys that were really fast. Left me in the dust. Like on the 100 yard dash. Amazingly fast. You see, but you see, you know, but do you, how much do you think these athletes uh, train? 
Now remember here, in Corinth you're going to have, you have the Olympic Games every three, four years, and then you have what's called the Isthmus, or Isthmus Games. There was something particular to Corinth. Okay, they had their own game. And it was a highlight of, of, uh, of, of, of Corinth. And, uh, and uh, they said the, 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 the one thing that was the, like the, the best of all things was the race. The race. It was a short race, actually. And uh, they said, uh, like John MacArthur, other commentators would say, they, you know, they would be training for two or three years. This is amateur. They'd be training and training and training. And the, and the last month before the, the games, they would go to Corinth and, and they, would be, they would be practicing. They would be, you know. And so you think about hard work, preparation, in, endurance. You know, running a, a mile or running a track, running hurdles, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. You, you have to practice. You have to get your endurance. You've got to get your breath. You've got to get your stride. You've got to get everything that, as we watched um, the Little also. Intense endeavor. Hard work, preparation, endurance, concentration, determination, <coughs> dedication, resolve. So run to obtain. What preparation would one need to run in a marathon race, that's a lot of preparation for sure. Um, my father-in-law has done that. I don't know if he's running marathons, but he's he's, he's a runner. Okay, he's a runner. Um, and and they had these games, and uh, it was uh, intense uh, preparation. So how do you prepare, dear ones, for the for the winning of souls? How do you prepare? Paul says, Know you not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that you may obtain. Notice it, so run that you may obtain. Let's look at the second one real quickly. Uh, verse 25 is imperishable, imperishable reward. And every man that striveth for masteries is tempered in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. See, the process here is that they are tempered in all things. <coughs> That's that word mastery. Mastery. Self-mastering. Self-control. Remember what he said? You see, it's the discipline of self-control. The renouncing of lawful pleasures. Okay, you, you think of an athlete for a second. You know, well, I'm going to watch my diet, right? I'm, I'm going to eat only certain food. Uh, definitely, alcohol is out. <laughs> you know, I, every you know everything. Uh, how long do I sleep? How long? What do I get up? What's my routine? You know, the, it's regimen. It's regimen. You know, we think of uh, athletics. You know, um, but see, it is uh, tempered in all things, every area of their life. What athletes allow and don't allow in their training. MacArthur says this, legitimate and lawful desires must be sternly rejected. Well, you know, uh, well, I, I, you know, eat a little bit more of this um, dessert, um, or a little bit more of this, or sleep a little bit more here. No, that's, the athlete doesn't do that. They, they're a regiment. They, they go after it. Okay? They're tempered in all things. You see, and, and, and we could... It says, legitimate, legitimate and lawful desires must be sternly rejected. You see, yes, I have personal liberties. They, may, they need to be rejected if, if I'm going to win souls for Christ. Uh, there are personal rights that I must lay aside if I'm going to win souls for Christ. And there's lawful pleasures that, that everyone is enjoying. But we have to lay them aside. See, how bad do I want to win souls? How bad do I want to win the race? You know, the food, the sleep, the exercise, leave the family alone, or feed, leave the family at home, you know, go in, uh, to Corinth and, you know, run, run the race. You think, well, that's, that's pretty hard. That's the process, tempered in all things. But you see, it's hard, but from an athletic or an athlete, um, but if they want to win, 
when souls, you see, the reward is, is much more. Okay, the, the, these ones would win, win in these athletic games. They would get maybe, a, a, like for Corinth, you get a, a pine wreath on your head, you know. Corinth, that was it. You get the fame, notoriety, you know, you, you're, you're a hero. Okay, right, until the next game, right? Maybe in the Olympics you get the uh, olive reef, almost like that. You get the fame, earthly, just fading. And then in the uh, scriptures there's an interesting study about crowns. But you see, in this verse he says, it says, And every man that striveth for masteries is tempered in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. That's all it is. It's just a fading glory. But we, an incorruptible crown. Talk about crown him with many crowns. We talk about the revelation, casting their crowns before him. And I said there's an interesting study. Well, I've never done that study, but I guess it'd be nice to look at in the, in the scriptures all the crowns. That there are crown of life and crown of this and crown of that. It's just it's an amazing study in the scriptures. Paul says this, 2 Timothy 4.8. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. How many crowns are going to be upon your head, dear Christian? Paul says, there's a crown for soul winning. Winning of souls. And, and, and so Paul compares, he said, these, these these ones are doing so much. These, these uh, athletes, and they're running, and, and they're, they're, you know, and they're just doing it for a moment of glory. A little wreath on the head. And what are we doing? We're doing it for, it says, an un, uh, incorruptible crown. That one day we'll be able to cast it down at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, why we run the race? Why we should seek to win souls. Let me give you a word from what Paul says to, to the uh, saints there at Thessalonica. 1 Thessalonians 2, 19 and 20. Look what Paul says. This is amazing. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 2, 19, he says, what, For what is our hope? Or joy? A crown of rejoicing. There's something that you can't, you can't make in metal or gold or silver. He says, the crown of rejoicing. He says, for what is our hope, our joy, or crown of rejoicing, are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For, for ye are our glory and joy. Paul said, I, I don't care about a, a, a golden crown. He says, here, look at the souls that God has given me. In my lifetime. You know, Rachel once said, give me children or else I die, right? George Whitfield says, give me souls or else I die. George Whitfield said, give me souls or else I die. I, I, know, what, I, I know what George Whitfield feels like. Well, give me souls or else I die. That's number 25. That's an imperishable reward. Think of that, dear brothers. Paul said, I'm going to run, and I'm running for an incorruptible crown. And for eternity, I'll be rejoicing in the souls that God has given to me. Let's, let's quickly go to verse 26. Determined effort. Verse 26, it says, I therefore so run not as uncertainly, so fight, I, not as one that beateth the air. You see, the runner, the boxer, cannot afford to waste time and energy and resources. It's no shadow boxing, you know. No, he's, Paul says, I'm redeeming the time. I'm redeeming the time. It, it says, I therefore so run, not as uncertain. He's, I'm certainly running this race. I'm, I'm on track. I'm on purpose. You know, uh, I'm redeeming the time. I'm not going to waste the time. I'm not going to waste energy or resources. He says, he says, work for the night is coming. Work for the night is coming. Or what 
done for Christ, only what done for Christ will last. Only what done for Christ will last. You see, this is a determined effort. He says in verse 20, I therefore so run. Notice that. I therefore so run. He's determined. He's, he's, he's not uh, hope so. He's running. In this matter of the discipline of self-control and the renunciation of personal lawful pleasures. The Apostle Paul knows what it is to be called. Uh, uh, the Apostle Paul knows what he's called to do. He said, therefore I run. Therefore I run. Paul says, I'm a winner of souls. I'm an apostle. I'm a teacher. I've been called to preach the gospel. I've called to, you know, to, to evangelize. Okay? And uh, Proverbs 11.30 says, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that wins souls is wise. There's no, there's no higher calling this, this evening, brother, to be called a winner of souls. The winner of souls. And so here, Paul, uh, in his, uh, it, it's not like, uh, you know, I, the calling of God is, is a hard thing to uh, determine, isn't it? Paul didn't have a, a problem with that. You know, uh, I guess the, the hardest thing for some preachers and some evangelists and some missionaries, you know, so, you know, Lord, am I called to do this? You see, once I knew, for example, that I was called to do this, then I said, I've got to get both hands to it, to the plot. There's no half-heartedness. There's no learning, turning back. There's no, you know, you know, wishing no, no. No, it's, it's, it's run, run. This is what I'm called to do. There's no, no greater uh, uh, pleasure. And Paul says, I therefore survive. Not as uncertainty. No, no, I, you know, so fight I not as one that beateth the air. He says, I don't waste time, I go at it. Look at verse 27 as we finish these, uh, these four things here. Verse uh, 27 is dangerous possibilities. But I keep under my body, bring it into subjection, at least that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Now that's a scary word there, castaway. In a way, you don't have to worry about that. I do. You see, that it's very, it is scary. It's very scary. You see, the dangerous possibilities. There's only one problem with this race of winning souls. It's me. That's what Paul says. It's me. <laughs> it's me. You see, I can give up uh, personal liberties, and so I don't offend my brother, and I can give up personal rights, and, and I can not take support, but when it comes down to what? Renouncing lawful pleasures. Who is the boss? Who rules? Who controls you? When your body says eat, what does he, what do you do? What do you think? When your body says I'm hungry, cries for food. We normally feed it, right? What about fasting and praying? Paul says this. He says, uh, in stripes, imprisonments, in turmoils, in labors, in watchings, in fastings. You know, watching is hard, man. You know, I, I've, I've tried, and I've tried, and I've tried. I keep on trying. You know, I, one of these days, sister, I'm going to do an all-nighter. I'm just going to not fall asleep. Praying. Oh, you're, you're some spiritual. No, no. I just believe I need the discipline. I need it. You know, I love sleep. I like my nap. You ask my wife. You know, I, I like my naps. But uh, nowadays, as my eyes are hurting so much, and they are, and I need, I need to just close them. I read too much. I watch the monitor too, too much, and, and and my eyes are drying out. But I. I have to, I, I take a nap, I get up, oh, I'm refreshed. I go at it some more. But you see, dear ones, listen. You see, Paul says, in weariness and painfulness, in watching often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. 
See, when his body said, eat, he said, well, you're not eating right now. When, and when the body says, I want to sleep, he said, you're not going to sleep right now. My, when my body says this, what, what do you do? See, this is what Paul's saying. He says, the problem is me. My personal pleasures. What I love. Who controls? Self-control, self-discipline, mastery of self. You know, I read about those guys, you know, praying all this time, and getting up so early, you know, Lord and others, and I said, Lord, I'm just, you know, I, I strive for that, but, you know, I haven't arrived. But you see, but I'm trying to run. Self-control, self-denial. See, the Lord says, deny self, take up thy cross and follow me. See, Paul, it, he, he says here, no, he says, again, look at the verse. But I keep under my body. You see, that's the problem. Now, he's not saying, you know, uh, climb Mount Everest on your knees. No, he's just talking about lawful pleasures that every one of us are allowed to enjoy. But he says, I'm going to forgo those so I can win souls. I'm not, I'm not going to let anything interfere in running that race to win souls. So, wow, Paul, you're, you're a giant. You're... And remember what he said? I am what I am by the grace of God. I am what I am by the grace of God. Every one of us here tonight can say, I am, and, and what we could be more so, right? What did, Paul, what did Paul, he says, I keep under my body and I bring it into subjection. The idea is that, uh, it's an interesting word, he says, uh, I keep under my body. He says, it, it, it makes it, he, it's, it's, the idea is having a black eye. He would buff it, he would punch, he would bring his body under subjection. And what would that, he says, uh, less that by any means when I have preached to others, I should be a castaway. See, Paul, what's Paul saying there? He says, uh, do you ever think Paul would say, this idea of failure, was, was the word failure in Paul's vocabulary? And I'll get you, yes it was. <coughs> okay? Because Paul knew. He knew that his body, you know, uh, he said, if I don't put it in subjection, he said, I'm going to be a castaway. I'm going to disqualify, I'm going to disqualify myself from the race. I'm going to disqualify, and it's interesting, how many commentators were talking about Paul losing his salvation? They said, no, 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 he's not talking about salvation, he's talking about service, he's talking about Christian liberty. He's talking about, okay, I, I'm going to renounce, uh, in, in godly consideration, I'm going to renounce uh, personal liberties that I might not offend my brother and sister in the Lord. He says, I'm going to have a, a personal surrender, okay? I'm going to surrender my rights in order, what? That I can preach the gospel freely. And then he says, I'm going to have the, 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 the discipline of self-control, a mastery of myself. He says, I'm going to renounce and leave, forgo lawful pleasures. He said, I don't want to be a castaway. I don't want to be disqualified. I, I don't want to be disqualified. I don't want to disqualify myself from the race. You see, Paul had the mindset that he says, I, I am a soldier of the cross, I am a follower of the Lamb. And he said that to Timothy. Let me read a couple of verses and we'll be done. Look, 2 Timothy 1.8 Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. That's one of my favorite prayers. 2 Timothy 1.8 I, I, I don't want to be ashamed of the testimony of the Lord, but I want to be a partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. I don't want to be a martyr, not in that sense. But if I can be a martyr in the power of God. And, uh, you know, my, my body cries out. My body bleeds. It likes food. It likes sleep. 
But Paul says, I'll forego that. Why? To win souls, to run the race. Second uh, Timothy 2, 3 and 7. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangled himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. 2 Timothy 2, 3-7. through Paul says, If a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. I, I believe Paul is talking about the winner of souls, running that race, running that souls, that race to win souls. First Corinthians 9.27, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Let me just close with this. In the, in the commentary, it gives us 11, 11 items. And uh, if you want a copy of it, I can give you a copy of it. But I, I thought they were so great. I mean, I was just blessed, so convicted of, um, you know, am I, you know, how am I running the race? In this matter of, okay, uh, renouncing personal liberties. In the sense that I'm not going to offend my brother or sister in the Lord. How, what about the renouncing this idea of personal rights? What rights am I renouncing? And then when it comes to this idea of renouncing of lawful, lawful pleasures, what am I doing? You know, see, I, I, are we? You know, I want to run the race to win souls. So he says this. This is summary. This was good. It says, let us draw attention to some lessons to be learned from what we have been considering. Number one, we must be prepared to sacrifice rights and surrender liberty in our service for God. Number one, we must be prepared to sacrifice rights and surrender liberty in our service for God. Now again, if you, need, if you want a copy of this, I'll give you a copy later, okay? Number two, we must be seen... We must be seen to be unselfish and be prepared, if need be, to suffer financially for the sake of the gospel. That's number two. Number three, there must be full commitment to the spread of the gospel in whatever way one is fitted. Number four, we must be prepared to be the servants of all and endeavor to get alongside sinners to understand a little of their problems in order to see some saved. Number five, note the need to sacrifice time and energy to help sinners. See, this is what Paul is saying here. I'm going to be all things to all men. I'm going to be all things to all men that I might save some, or save them more. <clears throat> Number six, let us keep in mind there is a price to be, prize to be won. Number seven, extreme self-discipline is necessary. We cannot live the way many Christians choose to live. Is that, is that true? What made Christians, what made these Christian missionaries great? It was their God. Of course, it was their God. It's the same on our God, right? But you see, they, were, they had this, this uh, mindset of the Apostle Paul, and I believe that was through the, through the Spirit of God. And, and, and they saw the multitudes, they saw China, they saw India, they saw the Indian, they saw the souls, and they just could not sit back and say, oh well, if God's going to save them, then God will save them. Was that Judson Taylor, I think it is. He was in a hyper-Calvinist church. We believe that, you know, if God's going to save the elect, God's going to save the elect. He doesn't have to send missionaries. Extreme self-discipline is necessary. Now, I, I encourage you, if you, if you want, uh, David, um, Bruce Goh is a good book, um, David Brennan, boy, his journals, David Brennan, 1700s. 
close friend of Jonathan Edwards. If you've never read it, it's, and maybe it's time for me to read it again. <laughs> Boy, it's, it's... Number eight, the power of sin must be broken in our lives. We must keep under the body. Number nine, beware of solemn danger of being rejected. Beware of solemn danger of being rejected. Number 10. We must know what it means to be under the law to Christ. <coughs> to be all men to all things. Paul says, to the Jews, I'm a Jew, and I'm of the law. Uh, to the Gentiles, I'm, 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 I'm not under the law, but I'm under the law of Christ. You see, there's, there's things that, that uh, you know, it's been really, I said, well, how do you witness you know, like I said, how do you we, you know, like, I, I, like for example, this has been on my heart. You see, uh, Abdul Vaki, the, the main, one of the main uh, Muslim teachers, I, I don't want to dialogue with him. You know, he said, well, let's have dialogue. But I, I really haven't, I've built a wall, I haven't built a bridge. You see, and I've been really told, and this is, what, what, what should I do, Lord? How do I reach these ones? You know, it's not just, not just I'm just bat, bashing Islam. You see, I want to have an opportunity to speak to them. And, and how do I become uh, I, all men to all things, to, to him, and, and reach him? And not compromise. Remember, Paul never compromised principles. You can't compromise. You know, that's what I thought, you know, Adela, he's still, you know, dialogue. Let's sit down and get some kind of, you know, dialogue going, you know, where we can compromise and come to some agreement where we, we're on the same page. No, Christ is all. And, and, and if Christ isn't all to you, I have really nothing to say to you. I don't want to talk about your religion and how great your religion is or what you're doing. And you leave out the Lord Jesus. I, I don't have no time for that. And people kind of, you know, like, <laughs> was it, isn't that Paul? Paul said, I, am only, I, I preach Christ and Him crucified. Number 11. Above all, let us seek to imitate Paul in his yearnings to seek, see souls saved. What intelligence, courage, uh, veracity, availability marked him. What understanding, sympathy, humanity, insight. He showed in his interest in others. What strength of character he demonstrated. How flexible he was in his determination to see men and women one for Christ. A man who built bridges, not walls, in his relationships, relations with people. He takes, it takes tact to make contact. You see, the Lord Jesus is a friend of sinners. If you're going to be a friend of sinners, then you need to show yourself friendly, right? And I, I, there's a balance there, brother. I really, you know, I, I don't want to be a, a partake in other men's sins, but I want to run this race, and I want to see souls saved. So Paul says, okay, in the discipline of, of a godly consideration, he says, I will forego personal liberties. I'm not going to offend my brother. I have liberty to do a lot of things, but I'm not going to offend my brother or sister in Lord. He says, I'm going to, he says, in the, in the discipline of self, um, personal surrender, he says, I'm going to renounce personal, in a sense, rights. I'm going to forgo, uh, he said, uh, support, some other things, and he can win Christ. And finally, he says, I'm going to what? He says, uh, the discipline of self-control, self-mastery. I'm going to renounce lawful pleasures that I might win souls to Christ. That's a hard one, isn't it? That's a hard one. I'm going to give up my sleep, my eating, my comforts. I'm going to give up these things that I love, these pleasures that my body delights and crazy in that the Western world dominates, you know, you know, pamper yourself, indulge yourself, give yourself to all these things, and why? And, and, and care for yourself first of all, while souls are perishing all around us.
all around us. Paul says, I'm going to run the race. And I'm going to win. Not a crown. But he says, I'm going to win souls for Christ. I, I challenge you. Boy, isn't it a challenge for sure? Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for the Apostle Paul, for your word, for the Spirit of God. And, and Lord, uh, Lord, you've challenged us in a great way. Lord, we do pray and ask for our loved ones to be saved. And we continue, like this morning, with importunity. We don't, we don't want to give you rest. But Lord, what, what things in our lives are hindering our loved ones from coming to Christ? And we realize you're sovereign. We know that you're well able and all powerful, merciful, gracious. But maybe there's something in our lives that's hindering them. We would ask, Lord, that you give us grace to remove it. And that we'd be able to run this race and we might see souls saved. They might see Christ in us. And they might desire Christ in us. So, Lord, help us now. Give us grace. May you be exalted. And thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that will make this all possible. Lord, help us. Help us to surrender all, we ask in Jesus' precious name.